Are your mobile devices overloaded with photos and videos? Welcome back to another Textination interview. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from Latticework is founder and CEO Pontas Sutarja. Thank you for joining us, Pontas. Thank you, Fred. Very interesting company, uh, Latticework, and you've got a brand new product on the market called the Amber X. I'll get, let you give us a little background, first of all. You've got a great background, too. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so my little background here, uh, I used to be a co-founder of a semiconductor of the startup called Marvel. Uh, we sell a lot of storage chips to large companies, and these customers were very, very demanding, you know, as you can Imagine enterprise customers demand quality, reliability in the systems that they built. That pressure obviously spill over to their vendors, uh, you know, us no, no different. And when working with uh, our customers for close to 20 years, I co-opted a lot of the mindset of quality, reliability, and data security that they demand. However, when it comes to my own storage need as a consumer, I really couldn't find a solution that provides the, the enterprise great data protection, the privacy, and the convenience and ubiquitous access offered by cloud storage solution. So you either get the, the reliability and the privacy, but you don't really get the convenience, right? Uh, so, you know, having worked uh, as a supplier, chip supplier for close to 20 years, I thought that I wanted to do something different uh, and also solve, solve some of my own problems. So I found that let us work to develop the Ember device and the Ember cloud to bring together the on-prem privacy and of the, what the local storage device can provide and the convenience and simplicity of the cloud access model, uh, bringing in and also bringing in many of the AI innovation that was started first in the cloud space into the private device. Well, Amber X is billed as your privacy first personal cloud. Describe it for us. What maybe you can show it too, but what, what does it look like and, and take, take us through how it works? All right. So, this is the uh, Amber X. It's really a sleek, small device. Uh, all you need is really uh, plug in the power in a, under normal operation. It's got wireless connectivity or uh, wire Ethernet. Now the wire ethernet is obviously gigabit, it's much faster than wireless, gives you several hundred megabits per second, but the wireless is a lot more convenient, obviously. And I'm using the wireless mode right now. So this thing is small enough to fit anywhere in your home settings, next to a TV, fanless. So it's really quiet and, and it's look, sleek looking. Let me see. And what can it do? Yeah, uh, so let me explain to you first uh, what Ember X really is, right? Uh, how we see it. Uh, Ember X really is a smart personal cloud that brings together some of the best features of Google Photos, Dropbox, and Apple TV. Oh, what do I mean by that? First of all, uh, with Ember X, you can back up all your photos and videos into a single device you own instead of sending them to some cloud services that may exploit your data. And no more splitting your storage to iCloud if you're using iOS device and Google Photo if you're using Android. Uh, you get to send everything to Ember X directly from any of your device, uh, mobile devices or your PC. You get AI-based indexing, such as facial recognition, uh, running on your Ember X itself, not in the cloud. So we ensure that your privacy is never compromised. And through our Ember Cloud service, which Ember X is attached to, you get to access all your photos and videos from anywhere in the world. So that's, that's the part that we say that it uh, looks like Google Photo. Uh, now, secondly, because Ember X also acts as a general storage device, not just for photos and videos, any document you store on it is also accessible from anywhere in the world through our Ember Cloud service. Uh, so we, that's why we call it, you know, working like Dropbox. Better still, when you attach your old USB hard drive or your flash drive to Ember X, suddenly you upgrade your dr dumb drives to a cloud-connected storage accessible from anywhere in the world 
and shareable to any person outside your home network through our Ember Cloud service. You know, that's essentially what Dropbox is about. Uh, really cloud connectivity to your data. In, in our case though, the data sits on Ember X. Uh, so you can so it has it has built-in storage, right? Five hundred gigabytes. Correct. It has built-in five hundred gigabyte, but if it, that's not enough, you plug in an external drive, expand it to one terabyte or two terabyte drives that you you purchase, uh, or four, uh, whatever it is. Uh, so you can expand it. There is also an HDMI port on this, isn't there? Correct. So. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, see if uh, it is uh, obvious here or not. Uh, we have the USB port here on the left side. Uh, that's a USB 3 connection. You plug in your USB drives, flash drive, hard drives, or whatever. Uh, the HDMI port here is for your connection to the TV. So we allow you to play your video. We allow you to play your content that is stored here onto your TV through here, through the HDMI, HDMI port, but that only serves one TV. So we also provide DLNA support and Chromecast uh, to allow you to stream your you know, video to other TVs in your home, right, wirelessly. So that's really perfect. Uh, so and, and, uh, that's, that's kind of like why I say that it's a, a little bit of Apple TV too. We can stream your data uh, to your home connected TV. And obviously our companion app, the Ember IX app, allows you to also stream the data uh, anywhere while you're traveling. So you're not really tied down to your home when you want to access your data. Very interesting. Now, tell us how this is different from other types of network attached storage devices that are that are out there is it designed to be used as as a as that kind of a drive as well or this is kind of a, a different kind of concept uh we like to think that it's different uh, even though the basic underlying storage technology is nas like the you know, network attached storage that a lot of people are familiar with but early on we realized that there is really no way to provide a good cloud connectivity to a locally owned device you know, unless there is a powerful cloud supporting it, right? And to ensure uh, continued privacy of the user, when you attach your device to the cloud, the cloud must be designed to honor the sovereign data domain of your local device and provide two additional key services. Uh, the first one is identity management because, you know, while you have your local account and things like that, when you want to share something to someone else, you want to share it to, to someone that is not necessarily uh, your, close to you, right? Not your family members. All you have is like communication between you and them through emails and things like that. Uh, so, so kind of like, yeah, I would like to share it to someone with this kind of email address that is on Ember Cloud. So we know that the Ember Cloud would have already verified that this person owned that email, the same email that I've been corresponding, corresponding with, Right, so I, I feel comfortable to share something to this person. Uh, and besides, you know, it really doesn't make sense for me to uh, create an account, uh, a local account for someone that I'm not familiar with, not exactly close to me, just a, a, an acquaintance, right? And even if I'm willing to go through that trouble, I don't think many people will be willing to create, create an account on your local device, put their data on it, you know, who knows, because you have local control, who knows what you could do with that data? That, that. So they would rather say that, show me your data when you want to share it. And I don't want to put my data on yours. Uh, so that's the first thing that we need to rely on. Identity management is very important. Uh, and the second one obviously is a feature that the cloud needs to provide. The minimum feature is a share notification, right? The person has to be notified. and share access and the routing service back. I, after I got notified, I want to access it through the Ember IX app. The cloud needs to provide the path back to Ember X. All those things need to be provided. Now, a simple NAS device 
does not have that kind of service uh, behind uh, to, to, to make it a cloud device. Uh, we have done a lot to integrate the two tightly while at the same time keeping the control local to Ember X, meaning whatever your setting is in terms of who you want to sh share, right? The final say, the final decision when someone knock on your door, please give me this data. The final control, access control is done on Ember X itself. So Ember X say, yep, I did share this thing to you. Great, now you can have that, this data. So all those things are tightly integrated uh, together and there's really no other devices out there in the world that provide the same functionality. How is AI used in what you're doing? You mentioned that. Oh yes, uh, AI normally is used to uh, provide, uh, you know, some kind of indexing. Like uh, the most common one really is facial recognition, right? Uh, so, like uh, an example of how I use it is, uh, and a lot of people use it, is uh, you have lots of photos. The AI just sweep through all your photos and says that, hey, we, we see all these people with these kind of faces and they cluster them, right? Say that, hey, this group of face look the same. I don't know who they are. There's other group of faces look the same. We don't know, but we're going to show you. And why don't you give the name and things like that, right? That's that's what we do. So if you go into the Ember IX app, after some time, you know, you will notice that uh, the, the Ember X would have already indexed a bunch of people with no names attached, but you you can go in there to just, uh, you know, apply names and things like that. From then on, it's very easy to find, you know, your, your kids' photos, you know, events and things like that. You know, that's, that's uh, what, you know, what the major use of AI is to help the, uh, identify things that will be too cumbersome for a human to do. And one of the keys here, you've mentioned it a, a few times, I think, but th there are no subscriptions attached. You buy, you buy the Amber X and that's it, right? Yes. So you buy it once, uh, you pay it once, and we provide the cloud connectivity uh, for free to, for the service life of the device. As long as this device is alive, you get to use it. Tell, tell us about pricing and availability. Okay, uh, so uh, coming week, we're going to formally launch on Amazon at a price of $229. But you know, mm -hmm. we actually launched this uh, on Indiegogo uh, last year. It was a blow up success. We, 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 we exceeded our target within a month. And by now we already shipped over 2,000 units to our U.S. backers. And we are also uh, on track to ship, uh, you know, our EU backers, their units, their units uh, in about two months. But for U.S. launch, the formal launch, we're going to do it, you know, if everything goes well with Amazon in terms of backend logistics, it will be live uh, this coming Friday. And I think the latest will be next week, early next week. And for more information, where can people go? Yes, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot that you can find uh, on, uh, you know, when you search. Uh, if you just search Ember X, you'll find a lot of information out there. But do go to myemberlife.com, our uh, main website for, you know, the feature sets, uh, it, you know, that it provides things like that. And also, also where, to, where to buy information. Terrific. Again, it's myamber, A-M-B-E-R, life.com. Anta Sutarja, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Well, thank you very much, Fred.